And welcome to another Mark Bishop show. My guest for this episode touts that a Harris presidency would be a disaster for immigrant women and girls. Okay, so Myra Rodriguez, the Catholic women's care advocate, Planned Parenthood whistleblower, and the 2016 Planned Parenthood Employee of the Year. Keep that in mind. A 17-year director of three Planned Parenthood clinics and the winner of a $3 million lawsuit against Planned Parenthood. All right, so who is this Myra Rodriguez, Hispanic Outreach Coordinator for the Catholic Vote in Arizona and Nevada? That's my special guest. Welcome, Myra. Hello, thank you so much for having me today. You're most welcome. I know you were about to go into uh, the big parade there with uh, Mr. Trump, so I'll get a move on here. Very excited to see all the people, especially, you know, the amount of Latinos uh, lining up to Mm. hear him speak. You know, Uh, it is his first rally after the debate two days ago. So we're excited that he picked Tucson, Arizona. You know, as we know, Arizona is a very important state in our elections, not only for our country, but worldwide. Right. Right. Well, you came from Mexico to the U.S. Uh, You worked for Planned Parenthood for 17 years and ultimately was threatened, harassed and fired for speaking up about egregious health and safety violations. And now, of course, you're fighting for the dignity of every human being and warns of the dangers of a Harris presidency. So Planned Parenthood for 17 years, that's that's a long time. You must have seen a bit. I, I did. And I actually, what I witnessed at, at the abortion facility is what changed my mind about abortion. So for 16 years, I work at non-abortion facilities. And then uh, I became the director of the biggest abortion facility in Arizona, which is Glendale. And then I started seeing the lies, right? Lies that I sold to women. I mean, for 16 years, I told women having an abortion, it's nothing, it's safe, you're going to be fine. The abortion pill is like Tylenol. And then uh, I get to the abortion facility and women are getting hurt daily. Like daily, a woman left either perforated, excessive bleeding, a complication. And then uh, the abortionist did not report the complications. The abortionist uh, did not follow rules and regulations. The abortionist will falsify patient charts. But who's doing and Who's doing the abortions? Back then it was Dr. William Richardson, who is a resident of the Tucson, Arizona, and also a professor at the U of A, University of Arizona. So he's the one that I mainly accuse in my lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Now, this $3 million lawsuit that you, uh, that you actually won against Planned Parenthood, you got that for uh, wrongful termination, right? Correct, under the Whistleblower Protection Act, because I had reported him doing all these wrong things. And to my surprise, and I say my surprise because I strongly believe that Planned Parenthood care for women. I mean, they're slow and they're scared no matter what, right? Yes, right. So you would think that when a director is telling you the abortion is harming women, the abortion is falsifying patient charts, they will do something about it to protect women. But no, to my surprise, they protected the abortionist and they didn't protect uh, the Mm-hmm. the patients they didn't protect the women they didn't even care what was happening at the center so and they fired me so they didn't even care for their employee right the woman right. that had been working for them for 17 years all they care was to protect the abortionist mm-hmm. and that's what the industry does all they care is to protect the abortion industry mm-hmm. same right. thing with kamala harris that's her goal that, that's her her main um protection right the abortion industry well everybody's working under the species of women's health and a woman's right You know, there's a lot of complications with the whole setup of the whole thing, but especially unborn children and immigrants you were terribly upset about, warning voters about the dangers of a Harris presidency because of these vulnerable groups. Now, you quote that you fled civil unrest and violence in Mexico City for the United States as a young girl and had no idea that you'd eventually become sucked into another violent regime. The U.S. abortion industry, that's what you liken it to. Now, unfortunately, the 17 years that you spent working as an employee of Planned Parenthood, this is what opened your eyes to unspeakable horrors inflicted on babies and moms. You know, I saw something once, Myra, on uh, a few years ago. There was some hidden uh, tape taken on an interview with somebody from Planned Parenthood of what was going on. No, the discussions between parts. It was shocking. 
I don't think anybody believed that either. I mean, give us an example of what you actually saw. Well, like I said, I saw women getting hurt. Uh, I remember a case of a 19-year-old who was 14 weeks pregnant, and now the abortion at 14 weeks happened through dismemberment of babies, right? He forgot the baby head. He will constantly leave baby parts inside the women, yeah. and that will cause a septic, to go into septic shock and having women end up in the emergency room and, and probably losing their life. Mm. You know, they could die of that. So this 19-year-old, they had left the head inside, and he was refusing to to do something about it. And the assistant, the one who brought up to my attention what was happening, she says, I'm missing the head. He won't listen. He's moving on to the next client. So I went and argued with him, and I remember that his words were like, go find the head in the trash. Like, like we were a bother to him asking for a head. You know, like, like there's so many heads already there. Why can't you just use another head? The, the way they treat the unborn as trash, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, you, you said it, you watch some videos. This is when they have no use for their bodies, right? The state of Arizona yet does not allow the trafficking mm -hmm. of these baby parts, but other states do. And then what do I mean by that? That in other states, it is legal for Planned Parenthood to sell these baby parts to labs, to a pharmaceutical uh, company, for them to experiment or the scientific experimentation of these babies. Instead of and monkeys, that's what right? They did. Instead of monkeys. E exactly. Bottom exactly. line, because, you know, that's, exactly. that was raging for a while. Now, you were showered with bonuses, Myra, titles, uh, you know, even, even the Planned Parenthood's Employee of the Year. But you began uncovering the truth in your eyes about the coercion, exploitation, of the organization relied upon as its business model that you saw, and contrary to their claim that abortion was only a minuscule part of their services, the abortion clinic that you worked at ranked in about $20,000 a day compared to Correct. their non-abortive clinic, right, which made barely a few hundred bucks a day. So that's the difference, right? It's money, all about money, isn't it? It is. It's all about money. See, and for for the longest, I, I didn't think that that was true. I used to defend them. I used to argue with people and be like, no, that's only 3% of our services. I work in managed clinics that help with 97% of the services. And then when I become the director, I noticed that that's not true. The, the centers that have no abortions mm -hmm. won't even bring a thousand dollars a day because they're funded by our tax money. They don't even spend money on that because mm. we pay for those clinics. And then the abortion facilities bring like $20,000 revenue every single day. And where does, that revenue, money making. where does that revenue go to? Well, it goes to pay for Planned Parenthood executives, the abortionists, right? And um, a big chunk of money. And, and then obviously, imagine on top of that, they get the insurance money from people who use insurance. They get the Medicare insurance from people who use our uh, the healthcare system provided by their state. And then on top of it, they get funding, right? Uh, millions of dollars of funding that Biden has given them ah. since he took office. I know, so you can I, imagine what Kamala will give to them. Well, I, I'd like to share, you know, I have you share other experiences. Uh, you saw many problems go unreported. Uh, apparently, one doctor in particular had countless health and safety violations that went unchecked. Uh, you heard reports of women and girls being coerced into unwanted abortions. How does that happen? Yes. Uh, so I reported also uh, the women that uh, were minors and they were impregnated by adults and were not, the cops were not called by them, right? It is a statutory rape in our state, in many states of the United States, mm -hmm. if a, a minor is impregnated and they wouldn't call the cops on them, you know, this is protecting the abusers. Right. And I call about all the women who use um, abortion as, as a means for birth control instead of uh, instead of they, they try to say that abortion is something that a woman needs because it's in a vulnerable position or, or they, they try to make it seem that it's on health, health uh, needed or, or the baby sick. Right. But the 99 percent of the abortions, especially done at Planned Parenthood, None of those are the reasons. There's no incest or rape mm -hmm. or sickness of the mother or, or sickness of the baby. It's mm -hmm. literally because women don't want to be pregnant. Right, right. That's it. 
Yeah, well, you could say, you know, well, they shouldn't be messing around then, right? You know what I mean? But anyway, a young... We could be preventing, right? That's the reproductive right prevention. to prevent. That's uh, exactly... Yeah, that's the word, prevention. Um, what was I going to say? A young immigrant named Mayella, uh, apparently mm -hmm. a poor young girl, underwent a late-term abortion in Arizona, and without her knowledge or consent, after Planned Parenthood staff charged her $200 and asked her to sign paperwork she didn't understand, all without a translator, mind you. So this coupled with your growing realisation of how the abortion and trafficking industries thrive off one another, that deeply shocked you. So from what I understand, how does now trafficking industries connect with this? Yeah, it, it, this is what we try to explain people. It's not like they sit on a table and decide how can we do business together, right? So... Keep in mind, I was a director, I was a training coordinator for the state of Arizona. They sent me to receive training on how to detect human trafficking victims, how to detect sex trafficking victims. I go and take these courses, now bring them back and train the staff. I bring them back and train the staff. And then when the staff say, hey, Myra, I saw the signs, right? This woman, mm -hmm. it looked like she's been trafficked. I go to the supervisor, say, hey, you know, at, at such such clinic, the staff reports is no, no, they're not FBI, you know? It's like, it's like play the blind eye, you know, don't, you're not the police. Yeah. Uh, you know, they tell the employees not to report those kinds of things because, and then they just say, you're not sure about it. I remember the abortion is once there was this woman that had bruises on her body and the employee brought that to her attention. And this female abortionist says, you don't know if she likes it rough. Right. You cannot judge by the bruises. All right. So, so as long as she says she's safe at home, that's all you have and we are required to ask, knowing that victims of human trafficking, of sex trafficking, will not come forward with just one simple question. No, no, you're right. So what happened when you began to voice concerns over these problems? So I, I began to raise my, my voice on uh, this is happening. Other employees will be like, Myra, you're going to get fired. Myra, they're going to fire you. Mm -hmm. You cannot complain about the abortionists. People get fired from doing that. But I kept complaining and complaining. And uh, after I complained about the 19-year-old, I called my supervisor. And I said, that's it. No more. Uh, I will do whatever I need to do. Go to the health department. Go to the medical board. Whatever I need to do. But he will stop touching women. Mm -hmm. They will stop doing what they're doing. And a couple of days later, I get fired, right? Yeah. And, and while I was in my office, they said they found the narcotics that are used on patients in my office in lock. Mm. And that was uh, the reason they were firing me. Uh, I right. knew it was a setup. Yep. I knew they wanted to set me up. There was never drugs in my office, just so you know. I knew they were going to set me up because they wanted to protect the abortionist. And that's when we started the wrongful termination lawsuit. Well, from what I read on the report, a predominantly pro-choice jury... They unanimously awarded you uh, $3 million in damages against yes. Planned Parenthood. Poor yes. taxpayers' money again, really. Sadly, the abortionist at the centre of the lawsuit continues practising at the expense of women and girls today. And, you know, that, that makes me scratch my head a bit. Uh, do you think, I mean, you think that Kamala Harris, the first female vice president and, you know, presidential hopeful, to a lot of people, would be appalled to hear these damning revelations, wouldn't you, being a woman, especially since she has centred her campaign around women's rights and choice. Yes, and she probably says that she's the first vice president to sit down with abortion workers at an abortion facility of Planned Parenthood. Many of us are former abortion workers. I belong to a ministry where it's over 600 of us that have left the industry have welcomed her to sit with us and hear our stories too, but they don't care. They don't care about the stories from the other side. Even if we left that industry, right? She do, they don't care. Like they don't care to hear, you mm -hmm. know, the atrocities. You will think that if she cared for women, she will hear out. But the, the obvious thing is that she cares for that industry. Plum Park is a big promoter of Kamala Harris, a big donor for her campaign. They have been big donors for her since she was the Attorney General of California and the Senator of California. This is Planned this Parenthood. Is, this is Planned Parenthood, and, and all their money has been going into her campaign. So it's obvious that she's going to protect that industry yeah. because they are expecting that money back. Well, okay. Um, based on what you are um, purporting, in the light of this, it's, it's probably safe to say that 
Kamala Harris uh, wouldn't have even let your file or let you file your lawsuit, I'm trying to say, if you'd tried to file in her state of California instead of Arizona, do you think? Exactly. That would have happened. So if I were to reside in the state of California, look what she did with David the Leiden's lawsuit. Uh, when the selling parts came up, she illegally throws out a lot of the evidence. She illegally have them uh, go into his apartment and, and destroy evidence. Well, she was the attorney general of California helping Planned Parenthood in that legal case. I strongly believe that if my case would have been presented in the state of California under Kamala Harris, I would not even have made it uh, to the first month of mm. the lawsuit. Mm. And, and that could happen if we allow these propositions to pass in the states to shrine in the Constitution because they could say that I'm just against abortion and right. throw any accusation against the abortionist out of the window. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I mean, uh, Harris's close relationship with Planned Parenthood, you're very concerned from a point of view. It's a massive warning sign to all vulnerable and immigrant women, especially because immigrant and low-income women are disproportionately affected by human trafficking, crime, and the exploitive abortion industry. So do you think, Myra, there is a connection to these vulnerable immigrant women and the border crisis, for Harris's standpoint? Do you see a connection there? Yes, of course I do, especially when you hear states like New Mexico funding a 10 million abortion facility in Las Cruces, New Mexico, taxpayer money for a small town. Then who does that town and what does that abortion facility will serve? the human traffickers. It is right in the border of Mexico and the United States. It's a city that has over four abortion facilities in the border with Texas. When you hear that they're working into those mega centers right at the border, yeah, right. it has to do everything with human trafficking. It has to do everything with helping the traffickers, helping the abusers get away with crime. Well, when you were at Planned Parenthood, what? give me an idea of the average timing of a woman's pregnancy. Because you hear, you know, these incredible stories and late stories. I'm talking weeks and weeks and weeks and semesters and so on. Give me, uh, w were there more rape cases than there were people who were ill or people that would die if they had a baby or some sort of an assessment of what you, what you saw? Yeah, to your surprise, during my 17 years working in Planned Parenthood, I have never, I never encountered a woman that needed an abortion because of a health-related issue. I never encountered a woman during the time of Planned Parenthood that needed an abortion because the baby was sick to be born. None of the babies that I witnessed uh, coming out of the abortion had nothing wrong with them. They were healthy babies from healthy mothers. Uh, incest and rape are less than 1% of the abortions globally. Mm. Uh, like I said, what I witnessed was minors being impregnated by adults. And this is why they want to remove the parental consent to protect those, uh, those pedophiles, those abusers of minors that uh, get them pregnant. You know, but obviously the minor will stay being consensual. She was having a relationship with this adult. Uh, but like I said, less than 1%. So I will say even globally, less than 7% of the cases of abortion are for medical reasons of the woman or the baby. So 93% of the abortions globally are just because women don't want to be pregnant. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking with Myra Rodriguez, immigrant and former Planned Parenthood employee of the year. And uh, she's now the Catholic women's care advocate, right? But I'm fascinated on some of this stuff. I don't understand. People are so vulnerable. And in fairness to Trump, you know, he goes on and on and on. People don't believe him about the border and certain things and issues. But you've seen it yourself. You're, you're very worried about Harris's standpoint. You're saying she's refused all along to acknowledge or address the border crisis, right? She's allowed historic numbers of immigrants to flood into states like Arizona. We here on the border with deadly illegal drugs, crime and human trafficking. Is that Trump talking or you? It, that, that's me. I mean, look at it. Look at it. She comes from a state from California as the attorney general. Under her time as an attorney general, she reduced the sentence of people from the cartel. She, re she incremented the amount of money the drugs can come in like that they were charged with. But on top of it, she comes from a state 
where San Diego, California is one of the number one human trafficking, sex trafficking cities globally. Mm -hmm. So she comes from a state that she knows this is real, right? Why, she knows this is why, happening, why but she would, keeps ignoring it. I understand, but why? Why would San Diego be where it is with that particular issue? Well, all the boats that come from China, all the people that are coming through the border with Mexico, right? That's why Arizona is in that influx too, right? Uh, of all this human trafficking. Mm -hmm. she, she knows this is a real problem. She knows it exists, but she continues to make it seem that it's nothing, right? Make it seem that it, it, it's not there, that no one is suffering, that no one is suffering at the border with mm -hmm. Mexico, the border with, with Arizona. We that live here in our border states, we see the pain not only on, on both sides of the of the border, right? We have seen the pain from the mm. American people, the American families, and we have seen the pain from the people across the, the border that are yeah. suffering the all rest, these consequences. The rest of America doesn't understand to a certain degree, particularly back east, you know. Uh, and the only ones getting richer and richer are human traffickers. I mean, look at that industry. He has created billions since Biden became president. Billions. That It's an industry that has made money. It, yeah. it charges $20,000 for a Venezuelan to get to the border. Venezuelan to get into America, 20 grand. Yep. It has yep. taken over from drugs to a degree in uh, the monetary sense, human trafficking. I mean, well, I, it's connected. If, if you think about it, every single person that crossed the border has been used as a meal. Yeah, but people don't see that. they're transporting drugs. People don't see that. They watch the TV. They say, you know, the poor devils. Look at it. Escaping, uh, uh, you know, gangs in their own country. Escaping bad uh, uh, polit politicians that, that hurt them. Not allowed to speak up. Not allowed to do this. And, you know, and yet they're wearing Nike shoes and this and that. It makes me laugh a little bit. But the point is... Uh, you don't see them as criminals that way. You don't see them as, as having paid mules. No one, no one stops them and asks them those things. The public see them as, you know, they need help and support. But gee, if somebody, you know, if we just opened the floodgates, uh, you would have three to one of so-called white Americans anyway. Um, I'm, right. I mean, here in Tucson, I think it's 52% Hispanic. And uh, if you don't learn to speak Spanish in the future, you could be in a little trouble. It would do you good, but the, in one egregious instance, I mean, I'm I'm on the outside looking in, right? I'm nonpartisan in this particular case, but this isn't the first time I've heard of this sort of stuff, and uh, it upsets me. Um, the woman is running for president, and uh, there's a lot of bashing on Trump. And I know, you know, in some ways, he's an idiot, absolute idiot, but uh, his policies. Uh, uh, what you've got to listen to and what he would do and read the border problems because he is fighting for this type of issue. Uh, but I'm, I, unfortunately, my own gut feeling is is that they're going to get rolled and uh, by bringing in all these immigrants as well, that's going to help with the vote. And, and there'll probably be, a, 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 you know, a Democrat party in, but we'll see. But you're just trying to do the right thing. You're speaking up. Once it got you fired, but you sued back because you could. Half your luck, three million bucks, but then again, you lost your gig. Maybe you'll go into politics. You should. You're very good. I don't want to go on any more with this. It just, it seems to me, Myra, that women deserve so much better, right? Uh, we than do. Kamala uh, Harris's uh, hellscape of crime, trafficking, and cohesive abortion. So, what are you going to do? What's the idea today? What are you going to talk about? Well, I will continue to raise my voice. I will continue to speak about uh, the protection for all women and the unborn. But especially, I want to leave your audience with a thought. Can you imagine a world run by Kamala Harris and the future Mexican president, which is just the Kamala version of uh, in Mexico, ruling, ruling this side of the world together? That is a scary thought. And anyone that knows anything about those two ladies should have a thought about it. We should think about it. Why we cannot allow that to happen. They right. both protect the cartel. They both protect human traffickers. They both protect the abortion industry. They don't care so, for women. So this is the real problem, right? Because I can ask the question, I'm an Australian, but I've lived here 20 years. I used to love going down to Rocky Point. Now, it wouldn't matter if I gave my wife a million bucks, she wouldn't go to Rocky Point, right? And yet others say, oh, it's safe, it's safe. Another couple murdered down there the other day. What I'm getting Correct. at is this. We're talking about the Mexican president. Everybody talks about the drugs, human trafficking. Stop it, do this, do that. And yet it's greed. People are benefiting out of it. And you're even insinuating, quite frankly, that uh, higher levels of government 
right? Yeah. Potentially the future president of this country is involved well, with the Mexican president to protect these cartels from... Correct. I mean, we know that the Mexican president that won, it's from the cartel party. We know that. You know, the cartel had a hand on their elections, a very strong hand on their elections. There has never been more corruption in, in a party in Mexico than the one currently sitting on. Right. So, can uh, you prove it? Can you prove that? I mean, peop- I mean, that's the unfortunate part, you know, that... Uh, I mean, look at him now, the Mexican president asking for, for that big cartel uh, SAR give him back to Mexico, right, when they finally caught him. So that should bring awareness to people of what's really happening. Yeah, yeah, we the, want to, proof. as a Mexican, mm-hmm. I don't want to be ruled by the cartel ever again. I escaped that. I would like to stay that way. I'm here for my freedom, and we will fight for that freedom. Right, but you're here because you escaped that. And thousands of others are trying to escape that too, aren't they? Yes, correct. You know. So, and that's what we're asking them. You escape that, do not come here and try to vote to go back to what you left. So that, that's my advice. This is what I do every day. Talk to Hispanic people, talk to Latinos, talk to women, educate them mm-hmm. and light them and the way we should be voting, especially as Catholics, especially as people of faith, right? Mm-hmm. We have to vote our faith. We have to vote our values. Yes, you do, regardless of that. So, well, uh, Myra Rodriguez, the Hispanic Outreach Coordinator for Catholic Vote in Arizona and Nevada and uh, residing in the Phoenix area. Thank you for coming on my show. I wanted to clarify a few things. Uh, it just seems so bad. It's, it's like a no-win, the border issue, uh, from farmers being murdered to rapists coming over and all those others. Then there are amongst them, not everyone, but... There's enough. What I am concerned about is the Chinese, the Russians, and there's some other uh, very bad people coming in through Mexico, from South Mexico all the way up. That's an easy way to get into the border, over the border into the U.S. So Correct. That's, that, that's, that's the biggest fear, and, and cells, you know. Cells in America uh, up against everything we fight for. Our boys have died for, our ladies have died for, our women, all our service people, God rest their souls, have died for for the freedom of you and me and other people. And uh, it's sad to hear, you know, uh, people you trust and maybe voting for could do a lot better, but don't. All right, my Amen. friend, we've got to go. All right, my friend. Thank All you. right, uh, God bless. Have Take care. Be careful today. And uh, you just keep up your good work, all right? Thank you, Maya. But interesting, interesting story. It's, uh, you know, you hear a lot of things and uh, you, like to, uh, you like to try and get to the bottom of it. And now this lady's genuine, I'll tell you. I have, uh, she's a very genuine soul. And doesn't lie. Tells it like it is. And <laughs> the guts to go up against that. But she won. She won her case. And they tried to frame her with drugs and God knows what else. But all the stuff she knows that's truly going on. Don't you think she should be in a, a form of government or a form of uh, decision making or a policy advising or, or in a position perhaps in the highest law to be able to prevent I mean, our taxpayers will put on another 20,000 border patrols or drones or whatever it's going to take. And it's going to take millions, right? No matter who does it. So the point is, we have a right to speak up if there's stuff going on that shouldn't be going on, right? When there's a face on it that our taxpayers' dollars are supposedly preventing it and helping when the truth of the matter is, it's all bullshit. So uh, no wonder there's unrest. No wonder there's unrest. But never mind. I got to go. I, I trust you enjoyed this episode. Well, look, you know, take from it what you want. But just so you know, and uh, very interesting. It's the Mark Bishop show, and I have to go. So it's like a box of chocolates. You never know who you're going to get. And that was unusual today, my first... Uh, I don't normally go into politics, but I, I'm, I'm, there's a couple of things in here that really concern me. And, uh, you know, but I'm open to great stories. You can always contact me, mark at markbishopmedia.com. You've got a story you think should be heard and talked about? That's what this show's about. Anybody, anything that's different, unique. You got somebody who uh, is an alien, that you know is an alien, bring them on. What about an angel? I'd love to meet an angel. <laughs> Ah, dear, dear. Thank you for listening. I appreciate the numbers going up on the YouTube channel. 
and uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, your following, okay? Have a great uh, week, day, year, whatever's left of it, and, and you take care.